Catholic churches across the country have been rattled by sex abuse and cover-up scandals for decades. Good evening, I'm Tara Brantley. And I'm Dirk Rowley. Just last month, Bishop Kevin Rhodes identified 18 credibly accused priests and deacons in the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. Today, two more names have been added to that list. Still, Rhodes says there has been a drastic decline in abuse cases after strict standards and procedures were adopted within the church. But we wanted to know how the abuse was able to continue for so long and why nothing had seemed been done to stop it. 15 finds out investigator Angelica Robinson took that question to the bishop and Angelica what did he say? Well Bishop Rose says at the time people were more concerned with protecting the church than those who were victims of abuse. As a result the number of abuse cases in the 1970s and the 1980s spiked. The bishop says they have since learned from their mistakes and there's a zero tolerance for sexual abuse within the church. It's a place of worship, tradition, and biblical teachings. But within the walls of parishes across the country, clergy members have struggled to escape the scandal of sexual abuse. Sexual abuse of a minor is the very antithesis of what a priest should be. Bishop Kevin Rhodes has served in the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese since 2009. Under his leadership, he says any priest who has been credibly accused of sexual abuse has been removed and the cases are reported to law enforcement. That wasn't the case decades ago. There was fear that, oh, if people knew about this, it's going to cause scandal. So we've kind of learned that that was a terrible thing. The number one concern should have been um, removing these priests. It was mid-September when the bishop released the names of more than a dozen priests and deacons who have been credibly accused of abuse. Today he added Michael Paquette and Bruce Shute to the list. He also noted that Eldon Miller, who was named last month, has two more allegations against him. He says this was an important step in helping victims find closure. They asked me, Bishop, would you please release the names? And I learned how important this is in the healing process. Most of the cases were from decades ago. Bishop Rhodes says there's been a drastic decline in abuse cases after strict standards and procedures were adopted within the church in 2002. Since that time, psychological exams, criminal background checks, and training are given to all members of the seminary. There's much more formation and training in living uh, the virtue of chastity and living celibacy in a healthy way. So any indications that a man is not going to be faithful to celibacy, he will not be accepted or he'll be dismissed from the seminary. Rhodes says in the 70s and 80s clergy members may not have understood the harm that sexual abuse causes and many were focused on protecting the reputation of the church. He says it has resulted in psychological, emotional and spiritual harm that survivors of abuse will likely endure for the rest of their lives. The suffering that they've endured is, is horrible and it's our responsibility as a church uh, I mean, this is what we're about. We we need to, to we need to give share with them uh, the Lord's love and healing. With the addition of the two names, the list includes anyone who has been credibly accused up until now. The bishop says there have been quite a few calls to report sex abuse over the last month. He says they'll continue to investigate each complaint and add more names to the list if necessary. All right, Angelica, thanks very much for that report. 